If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Whether it's passing a driving test or trying to murder your childhood rival, you shouldn't give up after one failure. They call it Apollo 11 because it didn't work the first try. It took more than one go to accomplish their goal, but they persevered and got it done. You need to fight for your dreams and never give up until you've won. Kenneth Braverman, codename Conduit, is a man born with special powers that let him emit a deadly radioactive energy. Once an asset for the American government, Conduit recently went rogue. When we last saw Kenny, his attempts to assassinate Clark Kent were foiled by Metropolis' favourite resident, Superman. Kent had been an old friend of Kenny's from Smallville, who was always just a little bit better than Kenny at everything. Sports, girls, academics. The Ken kid was always one step ahead. And an upbringing of always being second best had given Kenny kind of a burning hatred of Clark. And when his life as a CIA operative fell apart, he decided to finally pull the trigger on his darkest desire, nearly killing the entire staff of the Daily Planet in his mad revenge. But now, Conduit can menace Metropolis no longer, as he's safely locked away in prison. But does this mean Conduit should just give up on his dream? No way. In fact, he set his sights even higher. Now he doesn't just have Clark Kent on his hit list, he's also added Superman himself. Truly shooting for the stars. I love the confidence. Round 2 begins now. Superman, the Man of Steel. 38. This issue picks up directly after Conduit's defeat at the hands of Superman. His attempts to kill Clark Kent and the rest of the Daily Planet staff had been foiled by the Man of Steel, giving Conduit another name to add to his revenge list. If he can ever bust out of this Star Lab cell, not even his deadly energy blasts can break Kenny free of this cage. All he can do is rage. Conduit's out of Clark Kent's sight, but he's not out of his mind. Clark wonders how his friend could have ended up on such a different path despite the similar upbringing. And he writes an article to show his side of the story. And a stupid guard at Star Labs uses the article to mock Kenny, calling him a loser, laughing at how Conduit's rampage was so ineffective. Clark Kent actually went to work the next day as though nothing had even happened. He's provoking, a super villain, apparently you don't need common sense to work at Star Labs. Spared on by the insults, triggered by his hatred for Clark Kent, Kenny burns so hot it melts through his cell, and his guards. Conduit is free once again, the revenge tour is on. The city of Metropolis hasn't yet recovered from Kenny's last crusade against Kent like the little kids from the orphanage he burned down to bait Clark into the story. Conduit didn't care who he's hurt as long as Clark Kent's one of them. And speaking of, Clark Kent's super hearing warns him of the returning threat almost immediately, and after a quick phone call, Superman takes action. But he knows Kenny won't fall for the same tricks twice. He needs a new plan if he's to conquer Conduit consecutively. I'm sure you remember, but just to recap, Conduit's emerald energy aura isn't lantern light, it's kryptonite radiation. Just getting in close to the villain is dangerous for Superman, sapping his strength away. The longer this fight drags on, the more it favours Conduit. Superman Volume 2 Issue 94 These older books love jumping from title to title, try reading 90's Spider-Man in order, I dare ya. Though he's not usually the underdog, Superman faces this challenge head on. And Superman might have figured out Conduit's own kryptonite as he realises Conduit always goes for long distance warfare. If Superman wants this win, it's gotta be mono a mono. But again, Conduit's kryptonite aura withers away all the strength within Superman. Tangled within Conduit's toxic tentacles, Superman starts to sweat. Quick thinking pulls Superman free of Conduit's kryptonite coils when he tangles the baddie to a passing train. With a little distance between them, Clark can catch his breath, but even as he sadly wonders what happened with his childhood friend, he knows he doesn't have long before the fight resumes. Fortunately, 
That phone call he made before coming out to fight Conduit has sent Lois on a quest for a secret weapon that will surely turn the tables on Braverman. A weapon that's just arrived from Smallville. But until this mystery guest regroups with Superman, he's gonna have to fend for himself. And he seems to be doing a good job of it. Fighting smarter, Superman uses everything he can get his hands on to keep his distance while causing damage. Now it's Conduit's turn to struggle. No matter what he throws at Superman, our hero's too resourceful for the kryptonite killer. Even managing to slice off a few of Conduit's tendrils, bet that hurts. Superman's on one today mate, I know it's a life or death fight but this is a brutal way to win. Though when Kryptonite can't penetrate lead, Superman uses his heat vision to melt a lead sheet into Conduit's armour, trying to make him a statue Han Solo style. But the Man of Steel has made one awful mistake. Their fighting has busted up the railroad and there's a train speeding down the track right now. Superman saves the civilians as Conduit flees, but it was never Superman that Conduit wanted to kill tonight. Superman realises what Kenny's planning, the murder of Clark Kent. Kenny smashes into Kent's apartment but isn't met with the cause of all his problems. Instead it's Lois Lane and Kenny's own father who meet him there. Mr Braverman was Clark's secret weapon all along, and while he does try to understand his son's plight, Kenny only sees his old man as another conspirator in the plot to ruin his life. Before any more blood is shed, Superman steps in. With the lead blocking Conduit's powers, he's got no choice but to surrender. Twice denied his revenge, Conduit can only double down on his threats as he's returned to prison. And even now, faced with the result of his neglectful parenting, all Kenny's dad can do is talk about Clark. Maybe Kenny had a point. After all, the revenge tour is off. But then, in Adventures of Superman 521, some weeks later, while Superman's dealing with some lunatic called Thorn, an assassin known as Shadow Dragon, god it's a cool name, delivers information to Conduit's cell before vanishing into the night. And then, in Action Comics 708, when we next see Conduit, Superman is locked tightly in a different kind of mess alongside the new god of escape, Mr. Miracle. A lone figure escapes the Strikers Island Supermax, streaking away like a bird or a plane. It's Conduit, and he's evolving. His powers of energy manipulation are growing more powerful. He controlled the light to blind his prison guard and then mentally manipulated the laser mechanism on his cell, making it fail, and then he's busted free with ease, and he's still got that data disc to give her an even greater edge over his arch rival Clark Kent. The revenge tour is back on, and soon after, a cold metropolis morning is greeted with a simple yet sobering statement. I know. And here is where it kicks off. In Man of Steel 44, we discover the billboard was only the beginning, as Clark and his associates are bombarded by the same message. But as cryptic as they are, they've been harmless. Until now, when one sent a Clark's editor came packaged with a bomb. Clark had thought the messages were in protest of a new book he'd been writing, but now, with lives suddenly at stake, it's taken a far more sinister turn. That wasn't the only murderous message sent to someone close to Clark. His boss, Perry White, is almost blown to bits inside his own car until Superman saves him. Someone is playing a very deadly game. While Clark does the saving, Lois does the sleuthing and finds out about Conduit's escape from Strikers Island. With Conduit being a threat to both of Clark's identities, she tries to warn him with no luck. Fortunately, Clark Kent's pal Jimmy Olsen promises to find Clark and keep him safe. I'm not sure why Jimmy thinks he can take on Conduit, but as we saw in the Silver Banshee saga, Jimmy's got some guts. Jim finds Clark and as promised escorts him home, only waiting for Clark at his door is this grim effigy of things to come. And Clark immediately knows who's responsible. Kenneth Braverman, aka Conduit. 
the note scheme is very similar to Conduit's pair strike against Clark, where he dropped off mementos of the past that every attempt to assassinate him. It's a very creepy MO for this guy. Superman Volume 2 100 Issue 100, the big one, and there's a big one, bloody hell. Huge spoiler on the cover, by the way. Who's Pete Ross? And can Kenny turn off the cable sticking out his face at will, or is he stuck like that? Clark manages to hide the effigy from Jimmy, so he doesn't cotton on to the secret. And Jimmy really is a pal, because he does really try to help Clark here. But Clark wants to handle this conduit business without collateral damage, so he shoes Jim away, but Olsen won't be accepting defeat so easily. With the life he's built as Clark Kent in danger of being ruined, Superman wastes no time. He knows that the usual villain routine when discovering identities is to aim right for the heart. So he jets off to warn everyone close to Clark Kent. First stop, Ma and Pa Kent. I absolutely love how Superman loves his parents. With so many other heroes being orphans or having evil parents, seeing Superman be a proper mummy's boy warms my heart. Warn and Ma and Pa of his old school pals turn to evil. Superman takes the Kents into hiding for their own safety, but while Clark toils in Smallville, Conduit strikes closer to home. He discovers a snooping Jimmy in Clark's apartment and gives him a taste of kryptonite radiation. Kidnapping Jimmy and destroying Clark's apartment, Conduit's revenge is once again on, and in an amazing move, he rings Clark up to brag about it. Conduit's got the banter, but Clark doesn't find it funny when Braverman threatens his woman next. Knowing his enemies in Metropolis, Clark feels okay leaving his parents in Smallville, for now, as he rockets back home. But we're not leaving Smallville yet. Superman's oldest friend, Lana Lang, and I suppose it's her husband, Pete Ross, get a delivery of champagne that claims to be from Clark, but the scene is set so sinister that I don't think it's really from Clark. Superman realises just in time that he's made a foolish mistake flying back to Metropolis. Clark never met Lois until he moved here, years after high school. In Kenny's mind, Clark's woman will always be Lana Lang. She's the target. The bubbly goes boom, and Lana's home is engulfed in flames. But Lana and Peter engulfed in safety as Superman just manages to save him. He warns the two of Braverman, but Dodger's telling them the whole story, just saying Kenny's after all Clark Kent's old friends. With no active leads, Superman asks Lana and Pete to go into hiding while the threat is active, before once again flying to Metropolis. With all this action, we finally get a moment to calm down as Superman reveals his thoughts on the situation. Conduit has found the one weakness in the invulnerable man, and he's striking as hard as he can. At his burn and home, Superman realises that Jimmy was still around when Conduit struck, and he's got a good guess as to where Jimmy is now. In the clutches of Conduit. Superman is absolutely fuming at Kenny's shenanigans. Though he's both Superman and Clark Kent, he sees Clark as the true him. All his hopes and dreams rely on Kent, and if Kenny blows his secret identity, then the pressure of being Superman 24-7 will be too much for him to handle. No one will ever see him as a person again, just a cape. Conduit taunts Jimmy with Clark's big secret before deciding, if Clark and Jim are such good friends, it's up to Clark to tell Jimmy the truth. And he summons Superman with a high-pitched signal. Oh, and he also sends some goons to rough Superman up, but come on, fellas, it's Superman. What did you expect here? And finally, we get to the fighting. Superman is playing to win. He orders Jimmy to run as the two powerhouses clash. Conduit knowing Superman's secret means everything Clark loves about life can come crashing down at Kenny's word, so he's not going easy on the baddie today. Conduit, however, has a plan B. Knowing he might lose physically, he plans to beat Clark psychologically as Conduit's henchmen prepare to use the tanks to blow Clark's parents away. Seeing no choice, Superman flies off to save Marvin Park Kent, leaving Conduit the time he needs for the next phase of his plan. Shout out to Jonathan Kent for this panel here, proper Clint Eastwood vibes. I genuinely think he would have went out there and took some of these goons down with him, but fortunately, 
Clark arrives in time that he doesn't have to. Again, Clark's devotion to his parents is lovely to see. He'd tear these fellows apart to save Ma and Pa. The henchmen leg it and we find out Conduit hasn't shared Clark's secret with anyone yet. Not even his cronies in crime have been informed. Conduit wants this to stay personal. Clark makes a difficult choice when Conduit's lackeys call in the bombers. There's too much carnage. Even Superman can't possibly stop every threat here. So, he removes his parents from the situation, sadly leaving his childhood home to crumble. This has gone too far. Escaping with his parents, Superman tells him a sad truth. Kenny Braverman's revenge won't stop until they're all in the ground. So for the Kents to live, first, they need to die. Man of Steel 45 and no one in Clark Kent's life is safe. Lois and police officer Dan Terrible Turpin are the next victims of Conduit's crusade as the building they're on explodes. And any hope of Superman saving the love of his life is cut short as Conduit strikes again. Superman fights back, but Conduit's having too much fun to stop now, even if he's only there in spirit. Because you see, while the true Kenny plots and plans elsewhere, a platoon of Conduit robots tear up Metropolis. Superman swoops back in to save Turpin and Captain Sawyer from the mechanical conduit box, but Kenny's already bragging about his next targets in Colorado. Conduit has found Ma and Pa Kent, and he's set up a sadistic choice. Superman can't save both Metropolis and his mum and dad. Either Clark's parents die, or his city does. Clark knows what his parents would say. Their two lives are nothing compared to the millions in Metropolis. And like a true hero, Superman chooses the city at the price of losing the people he loves most in the world. He does resolve to try to save everyone, but Conduit takes the choice out of Clark's hands anyway when he detonates the Kent's Colorado cabin. Little does Braverman know, the Kent's escaped with their lives. The human remains his crew discover in the wreckage really belong to two local policemen investigating the area. But sadly, there's no way Clark could know that. Landing at what was once the Kent cabin, but is now a crater. Superman loses his last bit of hope. Conduit has won. Superman is no more. But Conduit's revenge isn't as complete as he believes when finally, back in Metropolis, Lois Lane lives. She's coming for Kenny Raverman, and she is pissed. Adventures of Superman 524 One week later, the world wonders what happened to its hero. Lois is reported as dead, but her dad doesn't believe it. He raises them tougher than that. And so does Mrs. Olsen, apparently, as Jimmy breaks through the broadcast. Jimmy's been busy undercover as one of Conduit's goons, gathering info on the villain, and he spills the truth about Conduit's motivations to the world. Meanwhile, Shadow Dragon, who gave Conduit the information he needed to deduce Clark's identity in the first place, feels regret at his actions. When he gave him the disc, he had hoped Conduit would aim his revenge at Superman, not Clark Kent. Shadow Dragon will have to do something about this. Jimmy's luck runs out, and the whole world wonders, where is Superman? He's in hiding alongside his parents in the forests of Colorado. But even though Conduit's still gunning for him, Clark still can't ignore people in need. The undercover Kent will need to relocate again once word of Superman's forest fire rescue reaches the towns, but they understand his heroic duty. Conduit's got more problems than a re-emergent Superman when Shadow Dragon infiltrates his base. SD deletes all the information he'd given Conduit on Superman hindering Kenny's revenge before getting the hell out of there. And of course, Kenny blames Clark for this. News of Superman's return hits mainstream, and it's not long before Kenny tracks down his old schoolyard chum. Conduit blasts Clark with his kryptonite energy, knocking Superman out cold. Lois is too late to catch up to Clark, but she does find Shadow Dragon. The ninja informs her that Jimmy lives on too, and he owes a debt to Clark Kent for unleashing Conduit's revenge upon him. Clark reawakens in costume and in his school days, somehow blasted to his past, 
Conduit wants their rivalry to end where it began. Smallville. Action Comics issue 711, and this isn't the Smallville Clark knows and loves. It's a facsimile of the town in his teen years, populated by robot doppelgangers of his friends and family. Braverman has created his own dream town, a town where he's the hero. He wants to live out the childhood he thinks Clark denied him, with Superman believing Lois and Jimmy to be already dead by Conduit's hands. Superman makes his final stand. The town tinker toys quickly turn on Superman. Kenny is now using Clark's past against him, corrupting the happy memories he has of Smallville, and Superman has had enough. The school stadium, where Clark had so often bested Kenny, is to be their final battleground. With an audience of the life Kenny wishes for, and a fleet of cheering robots looking like his father, Conduit's ready to prove once and for all who is number one. Even after all he's done, Superman still would rather talk to Conduit, but Kenny, who was already mad at being second best to Clark and now thinks that Clark only won thanks to his superpowers, is furious. Clark tries one final time to explain the truth, but Conduit won't hear it. This can only end one way. Shedding the costumes, the battle is men, and this is hardcore stuff dude. This isn't just Clark's life on the line, it's his honour. Two decades of bitter resentment have led to this as the two once friends fight to the death. Their past friendship means nothing to either of them now. Kenny's callous killing of Clark's friends has poisoned any chance of reconciliation, and Braverman's warped perspective can't allow him to move on until Clark is dead too. Clark's greatest weakness is Kenny's greatest strength. Superman's going to need more than his powers to win this fight. He tears the cables powering the robots from the roots and blasts Conduit, hoping to overload Kenny's systems. But Kenny is the system, and there's no limit to the madman's power. Supercharged, Conduit bursts out of his body, surging with the uncontrollable energy, ready to kill Clark. Until his body can take no more. Conduit burned himself out, and Kenny Braverman comes in second one final time. But to Clark, this is no victory. He never wanted this. Kenny Braverman's true enemy had always been himself. Man of Steel 46 finishes this saga. Conduit was powerful, but even he couldn't have accomplished all this alone. His nefarious network, Pipeline, still has all the information that began this madness. For now, anyway. Decimating the evildoers, Superman ensures his private life stays private by deleting all the info on Clark Kent's friends and family. The survivors will be safe. All that remains is burying the dead. Superman delivers Kenny's body to his father, but even in death, the man refuses to respect his son. So Superman tells Mr. Braverman that people are shaped by those around them. If Kenny was a failure, then it's because his father only taught him how to fail. Had this man ever shown Kenny any love, none of this would have happened. The sins of the father were laid upon the child. And that's it for Conduit then, eh? They kill him? Couldn't believe that. But then I suppose Conduit aiming for Clark's loved ones pushed Superman into a corner, didn't it? The only way this could have ended is with one of them dying and they weren't going to kill Superman, were they? But having Kenny's own power burn him out was pretty grisly. Psychologically, recreating the teenage years for the last fight did well to show us what Conduit was really all about. His whole life he'd been desperate to be loved, and seeing that not even dying gets him a second glance from his dad was heartbreaking. The true villain of the story really was Mr. Braverman's poor parenting, and that contrasted with the Kent's loving approach creating Superman, does show that as dodgy as it sounds, love is the best superpower. Childhood friends becoming supervillains is an interesting story device because it highlights how the hero chooses to do the right thing. If the hero and villain have similar backgrounds, then we know it's no accident that the hero is good, it's because they choose to be. Nothing was stopping Conduit from going and signing up to the Justice League, if he had wanted to do some good, but clearly he didn't, he just wanted the glory. 
To one frequent commenter, SR Striker, Conduit's situation reminded him of Harry Osborne's rivalry with Peter Parker. Like with Harry, Kenny's father far preferred his son's friend over him and didn't do much to hide it. And ultimately, trying to impress the fathers, or in Conduit's case, everybody, was what led to the death. Meanwhile, the heroes both had good father figures to love and teach them, with Clark having Jonathan and Peter having Uncle Ben. I liked Conduit, and I would have really liked them as kinda like a Vegeta to Superman's Goku, always second best and desperate to overtake him. He could have pretended to be a hero for a while before it's revealed he's the one causing all the disasters. Or is that a bit too much like Syndrome from The Incredibles? But in the end, all in all, when it's all said and done, Conduit was a great villain. Nice try, Kenny. Rest in peace. Oh wait, whatever happened to Jimmy? Action Comics 712, and in the time since his goons captured Superman's pal, Conduit had Jimmy hooked up to a death trap, ready to go off in the event of Conduit's own passing. The room Olsen's trapped in is set to crush Jim by increasing the air pressure if Superman dares try to save him. But if Clark does nothing, a bomb hidden in downtown Smallville explodes. Conduit does love these choose your punishment situations, doesn't he? Like before, Superman chooses the needs of the many. He rips up Smallville, desperately searching for this bomb. To Clark's horror, however, there's more than one. He feels awful for Jimmy, but what else can he do? After successfully rounding up the bombs, Clark returns to save his friend. There must be some way to approach him without triggering the death switch. And Superman finds it when, with Jimmy's help, he realises that if he can't bust into that room, he can bust Jimmy out by making an air vacuum to pull the walls down. Superman saves his friend, and the threat of Conduit is finally, completely, over. Looks like even in death, Kenny just can't win. Or maybe it's that Superman can't lose.